Okay, I'd like to welcome Magnus Muller. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> yes, thank you all for coming. And also, huge thanks to Side Effects for having me here. Really excited to talk about our process for look development using Solaris as the core. So I'm a co-founder of a small studio called Tumblehead. We do like really cartoony character-based 2D, 3D, UPA kind of cartoony stuff. Um, and the core team is the guy with the hot dog there, he's Jesper. And then Peter in the middle and me clinging on to Peter. So that's us. We're based uh, right, yeah, next to the volcano in Denmark, in Viborg. And oh yeah, there's a little weird. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so this talk is going to be mainly in two parts. Uh, number one, uh, I'll talk about like how we set up a character uh, in the look dev stage for our short films and also other productions. So that's the main part of the talk. It will center around how you can use Solaris together, like seamlessly together with like ZBrush or an easily iterate fast and be really creative inside, directly inside of Solaris, which I love to work in. And then uh, second part, I'll shortly show like how you can apply that to, to a full production basically. Uh, so let's get into it. So the night. So this character is the main character of a little short film we're working on called Freelance that we are doing together with Luciano and Marion. And shout out to Marion, I think she's here in the back. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so Luciano is the director, Marion is doing some amazing uh, 2D designs. So how we always start the look dev process is that we gather on Miro, we put down all the artwork uh, we've done and talk about it. And then at the same time, also make the pipeline, which has been a big effort of mine the last few years. So I always try to push to have more and more work being done inside of Houdini, like we all want, right? And right now we are using Maya for animation and rigging, but hopefully at some point it, it, that will be shifted to Houdini directly. That would be amazing. But, um, you know, when you're doing characters and stuff, uh, I love, for example, to sculpt in ZBrush. Maybe some of you are using Blender or 3D Coat. And everyone is using Substance Painter or Mario, for example, for textures. And it's really important when you're doing look dev that you have like this seamless back and forth between all the softwares you're using. And for that, in the middle, uh, we are using a free artist pipeline tool called Prism. And I'll show you an example how we work with that. OK, let's start. Initial setup, we're importing the USD model and setting up uh, the lights. 
So we have this inside of Solaris here, we have this little HDA, which is attached to like a library type thing. Um, uh, this is present, by the way, it's free, so anyone can use it. Um, so it's really easy to, to drop in any asset you like, if it's a character or an, like a prop or a set or whatever. And it also, we also made it so you can add a thumbnail, so it's a bit artist friendly. Um, and then, so when I start doing look dev for a character, I usually have like a base model. And so this is like the initial process we always do. And then, by the way, you only have to do this once. Of course, you can store this, copy paste it, save it out as USD and import it, whatever you want. So when you have like, um, this base kind of lighting set, then you then you can really start shading. Oh yeah, and by the way, we, uh, Richard Frangenberg, which is doing Prism, he has been really helpful to us, adding like requests to just pull in HDRIs and textures and anything like that. So it's really seamless and very artist friendly way to to get stuff into Solaris. Uh, okay, so when we have that set up. Uh, then the next step is to assign materials, which is super easy in Solaris. So yeah, I'm going a bit quick through all of this, but um, just to show the basic overview. And now he looks like the guy from Terminator 2. And voila, beautiful. Okay, the next thing I always do in the beginning for any look dev is always to, as soon as possible, just get some animation into Solaris because if you're doing shading or anything on a static T-pose, you have no idea how it's gonna look like in your movie, right? So that's also great about um, Solaris is so easy to just uh, get your USD cache from the animators. Just again, yeah, just using the, the browser there and you can make your HDA to get it in. And then there are probably more professional ways of doing this. I'm just using the merge node. That's what felt intuitive to me. And now the animation is on top of your look dev. So as long as you're applying all this stuff after where you want to export your shading asset, you can do anything you want. So now you can have uh, the render running live and you have like the forming GU and you can really visualize much better how the, the character is going to look like. And testing with motion blur as well. All right, so what I usually do then when I, uh, when I have that set up is to go in and add, add a bit of details in, in ZBrush. Um, earlier, I had a lot of struggle with getting proper uh, displacement maps and stuff like that with UDIMs out from ZBrush and into any renderer. It was always uh, hours of trial and error. And so I just wanted to show that um, that with some really easy way with Material X in Solaris, you don't have to do any settings in ZBrush. You just set everything to one, basically, and it just works. That is kind of magic. So I'll show the, the exporter here in a second. Oh, he's looking a bit sunburned, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so what I usually do is to have like um, replicate the USD hierarchy that I have in Solaris in in ZBrush. So I have like one subtool folder for each UDIM. And then you do T-Post Mesh, unwrap, back T-Post Mesh. And then you have all your UDIM set up for Solaris. It's a very quick way. Uh, and again, we are a small studio, so this is just me being a lots of department at the same time and trying to <laughs> get stuff done. Uh, 
and then finally we have this quick export that is also part of uh, the prism thing that you can all of you can use and click 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 but I, I don't know if anyone in here is using ZBrush, but how painful it is to get it into a renderer. And now with Material X, it's so extremely simple. So, right, so then I have my textures there. And, right. So now, how do you bring that into Solaris? It's quite easy. So the way I work is a bit like I just do everything in one pipe. So because I want the animators to start animating before I do all the UVs and stuff, just because we are always in a bottleneck with getting started with animation. So now I, I made a UVs in, in ZBrush, and you just copy them over. I just made a bop here. Um, copy using the attribute copy. And now I have UVs on my USD model after animation, which is pretty cool. And with UDIMs and everything. Um, and of course you want to apply some textures. And uh, Again, trying to make it as artist-friendly as possible. You can just drag and drop your maps into, set them up as material X and connect to your materials. And he still looks really sunburned. So one of my favorite things, uh, <laughs> in shading, as you could probably see in the intro, is subsurface scattering. I don't know, it's like, I feel it's almost like cheating <laughs> in shading. So if you have to do something fast and make it look okay, I, I always go for subsurface scattering and, and turn it up to 11 always. So yeah, but here is just like bringing in those maps that was generated on the UDMs, just work, Material X, just as long as you're exporting as the XR, it, there are no settings, basically. I, I hope that was clear, but to me that was kind of mind blowing when I figured that out, that was so easy. So the next program is uh, that I use a lot is uh, Substance Painter. Um, and I always felt it was kind of a pain to get that into whatever I'm, I'm rendering. And um, and so here I'm just uh, exporting some roughness maps. Just one click to get that set up. And then you have your maps here that you can just drag and drop into Solaris. Right, so yeah, so the philosophy like in our studio is to 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 use uh, Houdini as much as possible, which is of course extremely technical, it can do anything, but it's in a, as much of an artist friendly way as we can possibly think of. Uh, and Houdini allows you to do whatever you want pipeline wise, which is really, really cool. So here I'm just blending some maps from ZBrush, some maps from Substance Painter, and Material X, and uh, and I'm using the color correcting nodes a lot directly in, like in the yeah in Solaris. So I don't rely too much on how it looks like in, for example, in Substance Painter. I would much rather just work directly directly in the where the end product is. So yeah, usually I just experiment with all the maps mixing and blending stuff and yeah, until I'm happy. Yeah, cool, okay. 
So next one is um, that you can draw in Houdini on 3D models, kind of like uh, grease pencil. Uh, and I found this HDA from a guy called Aaron Smith. So shout out to him. Um, but basically you can in like a sub modify in Solaris, or you could do it anywhere in Houdini, but I like to just do everything in Solaris and never go to the object mode. Uh, so yeah, I found this HDA and figure you can paint on 3D models, which I was kind of excited about. And I edited out like 500 undos that I did <laughs> to find the line that I liked. And then, of course, you can just use your standard SOP um, nodes to make it stick to your animation, which is really cool. So using like a point deform, which is the same as a wrap deformer in Maya or yeah, whatever you want. And yeah, I'm just setting the uh, selection for what which polygons those strokes should follow. And oh yeah, and here I found it's so cool. You can use the attribute blur and stuff like that to kind of uh, clean up the jitters that you sometimes get when you're sticking stuff to animated geometry. I'm sure, you. If anyone is into rigging here, you'll probably have issues with that. And it's just so nice to just throw down one node and then problem is solved. Then using a raise up at the end with a little bit of peak to make sure that it's not intersecting with the animated geometry. And then back uh, up in Solaris, there's the character with the strokes. Um, and it's also animated, which I didn't include right there. <laughs> yeah, and for example, when you're doing look dev, you want to have like maybe build some small tools to do like a color palette or like in this case, randomized uh, color of the stroke. So this is for like the, the feather he has at, on, on his helmet. So really simple taking uh, the good old class attribute into a random node and then feeding that into a ramp. And now you have your little tool to make random colors and you have the ramp is basically your color palette. And it's so intuitive and e easy to use and you can so easily modify it as well. So yeah, it was really, really fun to play with that. Um, another node I use a lot in Solaris is the light mixer It's amazing. I just, yeah, I love it. So always when I'm doing look development, I want to make sure that whatever you're, you're shading, you test out different lighting conditions for it. So I quickly do some variations on with the light mixer, right? And then you just use the switch node to quickly uh, test out different lighting conditions, which is really fun as well. I usually, always like lose a couple of hours when I get to this point because so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm sure you all seen by now like the um, how you set the lighting, but um, yeah, it's just so ar artist friendly and fun to, to play with. So I also use the light mixer in the multi-shot workflow for like lighting overrides for uh, the different shots, for example. Uh, so also like usually have a base set up for with a bunch of lights and then with the light mixer doing overrides. So that's pretty cool. All right. And then the next step I uh, do is to, okay, I have my shaded assets and now let's bring it uh, over to to a, to a shot. And the process is very similar. Um, I usually just export the shading model or the shading asset just as flattened as a completely new file. Um, so everything is in there. 
and then in in yeah like in the animation scene uh, it's the same way as in the previous example you just get your character in your animation in i use a merge to put the animation on top of the shading asset and the cool thing about that is that in between all of those nodes you can put other stuff over right so it's so flexible and yeah using some sub modifier to make a boolean out for the windows adding some fog which is just like a box uh with vdb inside or yeah or it's vdb some light blockers and it's all node based even the render settings is node based And then I just layer in the lights, like the fill lights, the rim lights, the key light, whatever you want. And then in the end, when I have those lights, uh, I, I do all the tweaking in uh, the light mixer. And obviously, you have uh, the camera tools where you can set the depth of field. And yeah, I just love being able to, to do films this way. Uh, so intuitive and easy to work with when, once you uh, like really get into it. Right. Okay. I think that was a bit faster than I anticipated. So that's the end of uh, part one. And um, now I'll talk about a uh, project we did uh, for all the Sc Scandinavian broadcasters. Uh, it's like a six minute short film uh, that we did. Actually, it was my first like real test of Solaris. Uh, it, it was amazing uh, to be able to do like 20 shots in one scene and just drag, like using the merge node to like steal stuff from other shots. Uh, it was really, really cool. So yeah, that was a little uh, sequence from it. Um, it's not out yet, unfortunately. So, but hopefully, uh, some point is only out on Christmas Eve in, in Scandinavia, basically. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, for this one, it's basically the same, a lot of the same um, techniques. So instead of one character, I have like many characters in the same scene. So um, usually what, I, what we do is like we have um, the first thing, <laughs> I know this is a bit untraditional, but I, I always do the rig first, again, to get around that bottleneck of animation because that's always what takes the longest. So I have my little rig here. I have my little the Prism USD exporter. And, and then I bring that T-Pose over to Solaris, and that's where it starts uh, the look dev. Did it stop? No. Right. So skip a little bit. So here you have all the characters with the thumbnails. And basically adding materials, adding like geometry render settings, uh, fixing some UV stuff, maybe copying over UVs, whatever. Uh, and it's so nice to be able to work on all the characters in the same scene and in the same context. Uh, and having all the materials that are easily shared. So if you update uh, one material, they like just propagate to all the other characters if you want. And uh, yeah, so let's see if I can. So from here to here is the shading workflow. And 
and that's where from where I export the shading asset. And everything down here is just to visualize, adding animation, testing different stuff, um, testing different lighting conditions and stuff like that. So, so I just have like a transform node, I guess it's called, to just offset each character a little bit so you can view them together in one scene. And I find that extremely helpful to see everything in one context. Uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. So then uh, the same principle kind of applies to your shots as well. And I love to be able to just uh, have one big scene with all the shots in the sequence or all the shots that are using the same background or the same character or whatever. And I have like a little library of all my assets up here and then merge them into each shot. So whatever goes into shot coming uh, on the left side and then on the right side there is the cached uh, animation. So, um, and then below there you have the, um, the merge node just to put together the shading asset and animation and then after that you can do whatever you want, basically. Oh, uh, the castle asset is in front of the camera. <laughs> so yeah, a bunch of edit nodes to that. That's what I use usually to set, do the layout. Um, and I'm going to get into the layout blob brush and all of that good stuff very soon. And uh, on the side, you usually just have like a setup for the background and then you just do overrides per shot. So it looks maybe a bit complicated with all the nodes, but when you know what that every node is just like an, a little override or whatever, it, it gets very intuitive and, and artist friendly. Because uh, all of the nodes are basically the same on each shot. So uh, yeah, and then of course the light mixer. The favorite. Mm, doing, I have always have like a light linker uh, node and uh, a light mixer node on each shot, and that that's amazing. Also, the fact that it's so easy to do light linking is is something, uh, yeah, that really makes my life a lot easier when doing lighting. So for each shot, I usually take in the light rig, maybe reuse from the previous scene and then isolate each light, just setting them up using the artist's tools, and then it's good to go. And voila. So same example on this one. Yeah, basically she, she wants the magic cauldron because she can throw a, a, a party out of thin air. And um, <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't want to give it away. It's a slightly modified version of Hans Christian Andersen, the swine herd. So it's, it's the same thing for, for all the shots. Again, here you have the USD cache. You merge it with your shading assets. And magically, everything just works. And then you have. Again, light mixer, light linker, camera override, uh, render settings override, uh, AOVs, whatever you want per shot. And uh, uh, at the end, you have this uh, export lop that uh, the Prism guy made for me so I can understand how to export a scene. It's just one click sent to deadline, and it's great. So I, I, I hope my point comes across that um, Solaris can be extremely useful, even for, even if you are not like super into scripting of X or whatever. But it's really, really intuitive uh, to use, and it's there is new features added all the time, which is great. So yeah, that was actually it. Thank you.